see you later. So yes, it's sucks. Can you hear me? No, I can. It's kind of broken though. Well, as you can guess, I'm on my way into Phoenix again. Pick up more medicine. Okay. This is going to be a little bit of a TED Talk, I guess. You talk to anybody in medicine or on a side of medicine, medical professional of any kind, when they hear stage four metastatic adenocarcinoma, in their minds, they think it's a death sentence. As you can guess, I'm on my way into Phoenix again. Pick up more medicine. We uh, don't drive anywhere near as much as we used to because we're sitting around waiting for the medications to do their job. Waiting for a uh, word from our doctors that we'll be able to travel again. Waiting to get all the, the little repairs done and taken care of. For the uh, RV and for the truck. It uh, takes a while to get everything organized to do it, but we will. We'll get on the road. Shelly and Grizz opted to stay behind. It's a long drive. It's a 45 minute drive. And it's a lot of work when you have a service drop. Grizz would love to come. And I have no problem working with him. But he takes care of her. He warns her and I can't be selfish and take him with me all the time. I mean, for a little while, a couple hours while we're training, we're still in earshot. And she can get me and I can be back to the RV within a minute. But on a trip like this, he's not there to be her medical device. We're only going to be at this park for a few more days, half a week, four days, five days. And then we'll be uh, on our way back over to Monta Vista. It's a little dance we do with uh, Thousand Trails, so we don't have to fork out any extra money. 
be able to do the things we need to to take care of the exorbitant costs of fighting cancer. Okay, this is going to be a little bit of a TED talk, I guess. When Shelly and I first found out about the cancer, I had already been being watched by the my urologist. And uh, he's an amazing person. We were doing what the latest medical treatment was for it. And it was appearing to be just a slow growth. Something that 87% of most men die with and not of. And it appeared that's the way it was going to go with me. We had come back from two years ago, one trip. Went in to visit the doc, actually our internist, our family doc. And we asked him if he'd order up uh, the test because we were going to go see our urologist within a week. He said, yeah, sure, no problem. He got him back and it kind of surprised him. He said, you need to go see the urologist now. We've made an appointment. That was as soon as the test results came back. So we got in to see Dr. K. He told me what was going on and it my heart kind of sank. And then I realized Shelly was sitting right there. She asked him point blank, and I know I've covered this in other videos, what's the prognosis? I kind of already knew. And he told her two to five years. You talk to anybody in medicine or on a side of medicine, when they hear stage four metastatic adenocarcinoma, in their minds, they think it's a death sentence. And that's what I was thinking. And as soon as the doctor said two to five, that's what Shelley was thinking. Now I know that over the years, there have been some amazing advancements in medicine. They were treating things now that they couldn't treat a few years back, six months back. My doc was super aggressive. Sent me over directly to the, their groups, radiology oncologist, and she was amazing. Set me up for everything I needed to do. And for nine and a half weeks, I was going through radiation treatments, upwards of 30 minutes uh, a session, five days a week for nine and a half weeks. I thought I was handling it pretty good. I mean, a little nausea, a little weakness, general sickness, malaise, but not like some of the guys coming in there. Some of them were peeing blood, vomiting blood, blood coming out the other end. I felt lucky. I felt like I was doing well. I could sleep at night. I could still do most anything I wanted to. But I was losing weight. A lot of it. I dropped 32 pounds, I think it is, pretty quickly. I could literally take my fingers and reach around my biceps, my whole arm. I didn't realize how weak I was getting. What do you do when you get handed a death sentence? Well, if you're like most people I know, you fight. There's nothing else to do. Or just give in to it. 
I'm not about to do that. So I was fighting. I started working out every day at the uh, fitness centers and any of the parks that we were staying at. Every medication that I was taking was making me sicker than a dog, but it was doing its job. And this was the chemo light. I can't imagine the people on full-blown chemo. Yeah, death sentence. Wow. When you put it like that, it's a whole different thing. So how do you beat that kind of a sentence? You do it with the help of a lot of wonderful people. And I knew I had those people behind me and with me all the way. Shelly and Grizz buckled down and they were there for me as well. I knew if I could make it through that first two years, I was on a good road to really begin to beat it. <coughs> I've reached the inner perimeter. Five will be the outer perimeter. I'm working hard at getting through this. And like I said in the last video, the test results have been, to me, absolutely outstanding. Amazing. My doc keeps bringing me back down to earth and saying, hey, this is, this is just part of it. You still have cancer. Even if it's reportedly pretty much undetectable. <coughs> he knows it's there, and it's the medications that are helping to hold it down, and the treatment. I may have this the rest of my life, and this may be what I have to do for the rest of my life, but I can learn to live with it, and I can learn to have some quality of life while I fight this off. I know if I can make it to five years, I've pretty much won. I'm 72 years old now. And at this point, if I stay on this path, with any luck, it'll be a city bus that gets me and not the cancer. But we all have hope. We should never give up hope. We should always fight with everything we've got. Not just for us, but for the people we love. This YouTube channel has been a cathartic help for me. And I'm hoping that it's getting the word out to other men. We were at a get-together just the other day for firefighters. You can't imagine the number of guys that I know that came up to me said they're fighting prostate cancer now too. The things we were exposed to, the carcinogens, the, the number of guys that have already died just on my department. And police officers, they were there directing traffic right there with us when this was happening. They're just at risk as us. And they need to be aware of it and take it seriously too. My hope is that these videos will go viral, get out there and all men, everybody, will take cancer more seriously. do the tests that they need to do. Do them more often than what's just called for by the medical community. Manage your health.
be your own best advocate. There are so many wonderful things left in life to see and to do. And you can beat it. Right now, at this point in my life, I'm living proof. I'm beating it. I am beating a death sentence. And it's not just the medicines. It's not just my positive attitude. There's something bigger helping me. And I know it's the Lord. You guys can help an awful lot if you spread the word. There is hope for all of us. There is hope for you. Man, everybody sure does drive fast nowadays. Maybe I just don't have a need to. Maybe that's why it seems that everyone else is driving fast. just picked up my meds. Another $18,000. Whatever it takes. Well, get a little fuel and then back to the RV.